Uh, so, thank, thank you so, so much, much. Uh, Mr. Chairman, and thank you for your courtesy and yielding the time. To Ranking Member Moran, thank you as well for holding this hearing. To all of the witnesses, thank you for your testimony today. To the veterans, thank you so much for your service and sacrifices. And I particularly want to thank Mr. Thompson and Mr. O'Malley for your testimony. It is not easy to talk about these things in front of an audience, but it makes such a difference for your fellow veterans and your fellow Americans to hear what you have to say. So thank you. Um, I'm going to, I think, just stick to one question because I have to go preside at the top of the hour, as the chairman uh, referenced. And I want to talk to Mr. Learman and Mr. Morosky because as we examine these issues, uh, we have to recognize that unfortunately, service members, veterans, and their families may have been exposed to toxic environments not only while serving overseas, but also while they are right here at home. In my state of New Hampshire, members of the military who serve at the Pease Air Force Base, their families, and people living in the surrounding community were exposed to drinking water contaminated by high levels of PFAS, pollutants that are known as, quote, forever chemicals. I know that the Biden administration is currently considering implementing better PFAS safeguards, and I strongly support these efforts. Unfortunately, toxic exposure at domestic sites isn't unique to New Hampshire. For example, decades ago, Camp Lejeune in North Carolina experienced dangerous water contamination, and the VA has since appropriately created a presumption of service connection for certain diseases for veterans and their families who were exposed at Camp Lejeune. So, Mr. Learman and Mr. Morosky, can you speak to some of the issues facing veterans and their families who were exposed to toxic environments within the United States and any lessons learned from Camp Lejeune that can be applied to other situations such as the PFAS one? Thank you, and Senator. Mr. Yeah. I believe if you take a look at the types of toxic exposures just domestically within the U.S. Uh, outside of Camp Lejeune and the PFAS, there then is also, um, uh, excuse me, Fort McClellan, Alabama. So there is a history of toxic exposures throughout the country, even domestically. So finding a way to establish something, as you mentioned, like Camp Lejeune, is what we're all striving for, especially the PFAS issue. They're, they're now indicating over 600 military installations um, have been known to have high levels of PFAS. So there are several different things that could be due, like setting up a presumptive uh, like Camp Lejeune or like the idea of the concession of exposure as noted in S-437. If we can concede their exposure to those chemicals now, instead of waiting for studies and science, we can provide a quicker direct path for service connection for diseases related thereto. Great, thank you. Mr. Learman? Uh, Senator, I'll just add that um, in the past, we've often dealt with toxic exposures on uh, sort of a conflict by conflict basis. Uh, what we envision would be uh, offering access to health care and benefits uh, for all eras on the same basis uh, and, and toxic exposures now and in the future. And that would also include uh, domestic as well as overseas. So we think that those who are exposed uh, on domestic basis should be uh, offered care and benefits on the same basis as those overseas. Thank you very much. I look forward to working with you all on that. To all the witnesses, thank you. And uh, to those advocating and researching on these issues, we're really grateful for your work, too. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I yield back to Senator Moran.